Acid V is Arturia's take on the legendary Roland TB303. This synthesizer has a unique acid sound and it's really important for electronic music history. So let's check out how good this simulation is and what extra features they added. Of course, the initial UI is really similar to the original synth, even having the same exact position and parameters at the top. Following every other Arturia plugin design, by pressing the advanced button, we open an extended and modern interface with more features, but I will go back to that later. The top row let us create the basic sound and has the most important knobs, the cutoff and the resonance, which are the heart of the 303. Besides that, we can already see that they added extra stuff as a sub oscillator, a vibrato, and a multi distortion circuit with a nice visual feedback. I personally love how the resonance sounds through the distortion circuit. And we can select a lot of different colors. At the bottom we have the keyboard panel. Here we can choose to play a sequence, an arpeggio, or play it as a regular synth. On the left we have a hold button that will keep any sequence playing so we can stop pressing a key. And then we have these three effects, slide, the accent and the vibrato. The whole feature is pretty useful for live performances because you could map, slide, the accent and the vibrato and all the knobs to a MIDI controller and then let a sequence play while you change parameters with both of your hands. Sadly, at least for me, in Acid V we cannot program sequences like on the original synth, but that doesn't really matter when you look at the actual sequencer on this plugin. Now it's time to press the advanced button. I gotta say that here Arturia made an amazing work. Despite the looks, it's a really easy to use sequencer. Not only that, this sequencer also has some small tricks borrowed from pigments and even the mini freak. On the sequencer panel, we have every note, C at the bottom and B on the top. You can also set each note on a specific step to be two octaves above or one octave below. And at the bottom, you can add the effects that you saw on the other panel. Finally, if we set it as an arpeggiator, now we can't use the note selector, but we can still use the octave, slide, accent, and vibrato. So that's the basic principle, but thanks to the panel on the left, we can take this to the next level. We actually have a sequence browser. It has a lot of factory presets, presets made by Arturia, and some tributes. And it's funny because they put a just similar enough name so you can identify it. Of course, we can make a sequence and then save it. And we can also transform the sequence into MIDI and drag it and drop it on our project. Then we have a scale selector. You have all the common scales and selecting one will make it impossible to choose a node that's not part of a scale. Now what's interesting are these acid scales. They are not really scales because as you can see they have every note highlighted, but the thing that's different is the bottom row. And it's on acid where you can make your own custom scales. Now we can see what these sliders are. It says use this to boost the probability to obtain a C in the note randomizer. When you go to the left of the sequencer and you check the name of the parameters, you will have this randomization option. It's also a slider and that means that the higher the number, more random is going to be. So if we take A and C to be at the top and everything else at the bottom, that means that when we randomize the notes, the most likely notes that we are going to have are C and A. So supposedly the acid scales were programmed by carefully choosing the probability of each note. Rate, gate and swing are self-explanatory. In playback, we can change the direction of the playhead. And we can make sequence as long as 64 steps. Shift is going to change the note by one step or by one semitone. 
Now, if you want to randomize everything on the sequencer at the same time, you have to use the transmutation. At the highest value, more randomization is going to be, and the density will make it so you have more or less active nodes. We have one last unique feature. You can set the sequence to be polymetric. You can see that this blue line represents the end of the sequence. On polymetric, the octave, the note, the slide, the accent and the vibrato will have different lengths. This will create complex sequences where, for instance, the octave changes are applied to different notes every time. Combine that with transmutation and it's easy to get unique melodies. So the sequencer in its own, it's really advanced. But that's not the only modern feature that they added. We have three LFO or MSEG modules that can modulate any parameter you see on the screen. And finally we have four slots to add most of the effects that you can find on pigments. Even the newer ones like the Super Unison. So as with other emulations from Arturia, they take a classic synthesizer, but they also add more features to make it more modern while keeping the original spirit. So it's so much more than just a 303 emulation. You get the flavor and part of the workflow of the original thing, but with a next level sequencer, modulation options and really good effects. But what's really important are your opinions on this synthesizer. Let me know in the comments what do you think about it. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like and check on the descriptions different ways you can support my content. I will see you next time and bye bye.